Hey, so this is the advanced, in quotation marks here, advanced Google Forms tutorial. Um, I'm going to show you a few things, especially with differentiation with Google Forms. So if you're feeling like overwhelmed with tech already, just know that you are definitely not required to do any of this. <laughs> um, I guess just leave, leading with that disclaimer. So, because it might be a little bit long because I'm going to show you two different ways to differentiate in Google Forms, okay? So first I wanted to show you um, this awesome resource in Google Forms that I love from Lucky Little Learners, the Spiral ELA. Um, so she has Spiral ELA and Spiral Math. And I love it because it's just like a daily quick check and review. Um, so there's just every day five questions in the ELA that the students do and then it's automatically graded most of it some of them it's not automatically graded because it's open answer open-ended like this this one there's multiple answers um, but the ones that are that do have a right or wrong are, are auto graded for you um, so what the first thing I'm going to show you is actually one of the questions from this resource so I just when you buy this resource you make a copy of it and it saves it in your Google Drive. So I just took my copy and edited it a little bit because I just wanted to focus in on the capitalization. And so I made um, a copy of my copy <laughs> so then I could edit it and made this little grammar assignment for capitalization, okay? So what this is gonna look like, I'll show you the student side first and then we'll go back in and see how to do it as a teacher. So the students will get their, open their link, they'll type their name, and then you can see it's just this one question about capitalization. Um, so marking the word that should not be capitalized, and so they'll mark it, and then submit. Well, they do have to write their name. Um, and I like how it doesn't let you go on if these required questions aren't answered yet. No more, no name papers, right? So then they'll click view accuracy to see your next task. So they're going to click view accuracy and then right there it's going to show them like good job you got it right and then you have the feedback right here and it says complete the center so they're going to click on this link and it's going to bring them to a center to complete that's going to help them practice capitalization in context of a sentence and not just with words. And this center is from the Lucky Little Learners Literacy Centers in the grammar. It's super cute, this um, chips and salsa. Um, so they just look and see, okay, which of these sentences have calendar words that need um, to be capitalized and holidays and people, places, and pets, I by self, all of that, and write down their um, answers on the recording sheet and then they can submit it back on Google Classroom or however you get assignments. Um, and so on that one you could put this link to be uh, the link to the assignment itself on Google Classroom and just right here in the feedback say complete this assignment on Google Classroom too. Okay so if they get it wrong let's go back to the student side so if they are doing this assignment and they get it wrong, then they click view accuracy and you can see they have a different task. So it says, let's practice. So they're gonna watch this video to learn and it's a grammar capitalization video and then click to the link to play a game to practice so that they, then they can practice capitalization on uh, digital to see capitalization and clicking on the right words to be capitalized okay so on the teacher side for that this is kind of you know the behind the scenes back end showed you the student side um, what it looks like is you're in the form you create the new form you have your title you can add a description their name you can set you can make this just one that says your name. Um, and then on the question itself, you want to have like one question that's kind of like your starting point. 
that basically if they get it right, they get one thing. If they get it wrong, they get something else. Um, and so what you're going to do is make sure in your settings that you have it set to as a quiz and make sure that you they can see their grade immediately so that they can see that next task and that feedback and click save and then when you're in this question right here the first question you're going to click on the answer key to add this feedback stuff okay so I'm gonna um, delete this so I can show you what it looks like without it Okay, so then you can see, all right, I have this question right here. I'm gonna click add answer feedback. And then right here, if they get it wrong, incorrect answers, you can type. That's where you type like, let's practice some more, you know? And then you can add a video, you can add a link. Um, so that's where I linked the centers and the toothy and then the, that practice video. And then you go to the correct answers tab and you can enter different feedback and directions to like complete this center in the link or complete this worksheet in the link. Um, and it can link to a Google Classroom assignment, a Seesaw activity, whatever um, you want them to do. And um, you can make this worth points if you want. I usually don't just because this isn't really what I care about as much as the work that they're really doing. But if you do want to count it as points so you can look at it that way, that's totally fine too. So that's the probably simplest way to differentiate. It's a little bit um, limited when you go in here. Um, with the videos, it only lets you add YouTube videos. So just it has to be uploaded on YouTube. And then um, I know some schools and districts block YouTube. So if that's the case, then you just want to use the links and just add links. And if you have multiple things you want them to be doing, I would link to a Google Classroom assignment and then there can be multiple things there for them to complete. So in your feedback, you could just say, complete this Google Classroom assignment. And then you could have a link to it right there. Um, or it could be a link to a Google Doc that has a list of things that they need to do, etc. Okay, and then after you enter in the link, you can also add some more text, like complete the center or play this game. And then you always wanna click the add after you have that in there so it actually gets added. If you don't click that, it just disappears and doesn't show up, okay? So that's way number one to differentiate in your Google Forms. And then I'm gonna show you now the second way. So we're gonna close out all of these extra windows I got going on here. Okay, so now this one is a little bit more complicated, but it's it can be really awesome. So this is actually kind of like the structure and framework of the spiral ELA, or not ELA, the spiral math from Lucky Little Learners, where there's different sections within the Google form that are differentiated. So I'm gonna show you a spelling test option because I ha always had different spelling groups, like words their way groups or phonics groups, spelling groups, things like that, um, that had different spelling words. So even if you're in the classroom, this is a super way for students to be able to all do the spelling test at the same time, um, because it's tricky to say like, okay, pink group, here's, let's do your spelling test. Okay, now blue group or whatever, however you call them. So they're gonna write their name and then they're going to click on their spelling test or their phonics group or whatever. Um, and then click next and then it's going to go to a section of the Google form and then they can do their spelling test. So if you're in person, you wouldn't need to add a video of listing the spelling words necessarily, but um, if you want them all to be doing it at the same time, then you do. And I'm going to show you that, how to make a fast video file with an audio file in just a minute. So. They're gonna listen to the video, write the spelling words as they go, and so then you just, they just hit play. Number one, light. And they can type it. I turned on. They can pause it if they need more time. On the light. And they can keep going. Number two, night. When the sun goes, etc. And then they go through 
and then you're just gonna submit when they're done and then they're they're done but what happens is in this actual form we created everybody's spelling test is within here all three groups so that you're only sharing one link you're not having to find different links for different groups and things like that so at the beginning there's basically we have four sections okay so we have a first section that's going to be like where they write their name and then where they choose the spelling group color or the shape for their math group or their reading group name or whatever it is okay and then after section one um what what you're going to do is create the sections first and then you're going to start telling google forms where to send the kids based on what they chose on this answer does that make sense so we're going to go in and i'm just going to actually create a new I'll show you this really fast and then we're going to go in and walk through creating a new one. So you can see here's section two. Here's the pink section. Here's that video. Here's their um, answers. And you can see I added correct answers so that it's auto graded for me because that's just the most amazing thing on spelling tests. Grading spelling tests is so tedious. <laughs> um, and then we have the blue section. And obviously I need to add the video there and then we have different words here for the blue section and those have all of their options you can even add like you know multiple choice if you want and then we have section four that's the yellow group same type of thing okay so how you're going to create that obviously you're going to go into google forms and create a new form like I said, if this is what you're like, wow, wow, I'm overwhelmed. It's okay. You don't have to do this. <laughs> um, this is just if you want to, because some of you requested it. Okay. So you're going to do spelling test. And then what you're going to do is just type in those first things. Name, short answer. Obviously, we want that all the time. And then we have to make a multiple choice question to give them options we have to do multiple choice okay so um color of spelling group so you've got red yellow wow trying to not be slow here okay and then that's required all right so now i need to make sure this is a quiz and save Obviously you can ch change those um, options in there however you want. And then what you're gonna do is in this right here, now you're gonna start adding your sections, okay? So after this question, you're gonna click on this little two bars right here to add a new section. Here's the next section. So we'll say this one is the red section, okay? And then we're gonna add our questions and for spelling, if it's a spelling one, you can just say like number one with a short answer because they're just going to type it um, here and you can say watch the video and write the words type of thing. And then we can just duplicate this question. Just keep going. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. If you're not doing a spelling test, if you're instead doing like a math questions, if you want a differentiated math quiz, then you could just type in your questions, add your questions into this section. You can do different types of questions on these ones. Um, and then what you're gonna do, obviously always do required on the questions, is you're going to duplicate this whole section. When you're ready with it, if you want it, the format to be the same, which on the spelling test I did, so you can go up here to these three, three little dots and duplicate the section. And then now you can see we have another section here that this is now gonna be the blue section. Nope, yellow is next. <laughs> That's close. Okay, and then we're gonna duplicate it one more time. And this is the blue, okay? So now I can go in and I can add my answer key and say the first word on this one is light and it's gonna be worth one point. They might do a capital letter, so we'll make that an option for correct and click done. OK, 
Okay, and then you're just gonna go through and type in your um, spelling list in order that you are reading it to them as the answers for each different section. Okay, so now what you wanna do so that it can actually function, they won't just go through all of the all, all of the form, you're gonna go back up to this color of the spelling group. And right here, what you're gonna do is click on those three blue dots and click on go to section based on answer. So then these drop downs pop up. So if students click red, then they're gonna to go to the red section. If students click yellow, they're gonna to go to the yellow section. If students click blue, the blue section, etc. Okay, but now we also need to go down here to the bottom of each section and tell them, tell the form after section two is done, they wanna submit. We don't want them to have to go on to the yellow section. And then after section three, or the yellow, we're gonna do submit. And then the last one just automatically submits. So then you have it all set up. So you can double check by previewing and you can see, okay, I'm gonna click red and try and here's my red spelling test right there. And then they submit when they're done. And then they can, um, you know, view their score or if you don't want them to view their score right away and you just wanna kinda of use it for yourself and your own knowledge, especially with like phonics groups, then you'll just do on quizzes we're gonna release the grade later so that it's not gonna give them the grade right away. And you can also decide if you want them to see the correct answers or the point values and things like that. So that's Google Forms differentiated in a nutshell. One other thing I wanted to show you is how to add um, like a header like this to your Google Forms. A few of you asked about that. Um, so when you're on your Google form and you're creating it, you'll go up to this um, little paint image and then you can change the theme color here. You can add more. There's, you know, you can use basically any color as your theme. Um, and then you can change the background color. It's kind of based off of the color you picked for the theme. So it's not going to give you any weird things. So you can change the font style if you want. And it just changes the, you know, the question font right there. And but the answer choice fonts are always the same, like that Arial type of thing. There's not a whole lot of options. There's like four fonts. So <laughs> it's kind of lame. But but then you can also go here to the header and you can choose an image. So they have some on here that you can pick from. Um, there's some cute schoolish looking ones and kids ones. These are cute and fun. Um, one other thing you can do though is upload your own. So if you have an image, you can upload it and then, or you can right click on it and click save as picture. And you can add in clip art to your header or whatever and group it all together and save it as a picture. And then when you go in here, whoops, try again. So you can upload this and then click done. And then it will just put that image right at the top as your header. Okay. And you can change, since it had like a transparent background, it's just kind of blending in with my theme colors. If you wanted to have it white behind it, then you would just have to save the image with a white background behind it. So I hope that is helpful and I hope that you weren't overwhelmed because <laughs> I know that was a lot of information.